Welcome to Faith in Five, a weekly video devotional designed to discuss practical spiritual concepts in five minutes or less. I'm your host, Mark Vandella. I spent my whole life growing up around sports. Uh, when, as a kid, I would umpire or ref to make money. In my older years, uh, like college age, I would coach. And uh, I've also just, throughout ministry and student ministry, I would always be at different sporting events. And the one thing I noticed is that there's always this this odd combination of you've got basically an umpire or a ref is pretty much going to please half of the crowd, right? You're If you make one call, half of them agree and half of them don't. As a coach, you're, you're maybe everybody's hero while you're playing their kid and then you're the goat if you pull the kid or you, or you don't start them, right? Or even when, I, when I've sat in the crowd and I observe parents, you know, their kid misses a layup, they had to get fouled right? Or, or their kid gets called for a foul and it's like they didn't touch him, right? And I was always pretty objective in that instance because I didn't have a, a kid in the game. But it's just always unique to see that there's basically you can be right 50% of the time in those spots. I think the Jesus story is really similar. See, Jesus came and he was talking about this, this great change that was going to happen. And uh, it was around the Passover feast as, as Jesus was a uh, kind of approaching the end of his life, the Passover feast was happening. And Passover was a celebration of God freeing the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. And so Jesus comes and he's been talking about this revolution and that he's going to save people. And they assumed, because of what they wanted, they assumed that Jesus was going to do another political unrest kind of thing. He was going to step in and he was going to save them from the oppression of the Romans. And so at this point, everybody's celebrating Jesus, right? The story unfolds in John 12. It it talks about how Jesus rides in on Palm Sunday. This coming Sunday is Palm Sunday. And it talks about Jesus riding in on a donkey. And people are celebrating and praising and waving palm fronds. And there's a lot of significance there as you read, if you read John 12, and you can kind of study through that. The donkey has significance. It points back to a a reference in Zechariah. And uh, the palm fronds have a ton of significance. Basically, all these things are pointing to royalty because they thought they were getting a king politically. But Jesus had bigger plans, right? God had a bigger plan with Jesus. And so, unfortunately, they get to a spot where they decide that, or they realize that Jesus hasn't come to, to save them from the Romans, but Jesus has come to save them from themselves, And so everybody turns on him, right? Jesus is their savior at one point. They even cry out Hosanna, which means save us or or lead us. And, And so they're crying out Hosanna on Sunday, on Palm Sunday. And then less than a week later on Friday, on Good Friday, Jesus is sentenced to death and dies, right? So in, in Matthew 27, it says that, uh, the crowd chants out, nail him to the cross. And these are the very same people who are chanting Hosanna less than a week earlier. And see, as we read that story, sometimes we kind of look at each other and we're like, how could they not see this? How could they go from, yay, praise Jesus, to crucify him, nail him to the cross? And yet I think if we're really honest with ourselves, when we look at our own spiritual lives, we do this regularly. Right When things don't go our way, we want to blame somebody. We want to point a finger somewhere. And so there are times in our lives where it's so easy to praise God and to talk about how great he is and that he is our savior, he is our leader, he has led us through a lot of really difficult things and everything's going well. But the moment that the difficult things happen, we flip-flop. Right now we're on the other side of it. And, and we're not necessarily at this point yelling crucify him, but, but we go from yay God, to disappointed with God in a matter of a day sometimes, right? It it took this crowd a whole week. And so I want to challenge us as we prepare for Palm Sunday to to see ourselves in that story. See the places in the story where we, where it's so easy to praise God and celebrate God. But then on the flip side, how quick can we flip? How quick can we turn it? Because if, if, if you take it back to the umpire situation or coach situation, if, if you please everyone, then somebody's going to be disappointed. I know that sounds like a, a contradiction, but at some point, you can't give everybody everything that they want. And so there are some things that we want that we won't get. 
So consider in your faith life where it's really easy to praise God, but look for the places that it's difficult. The places that you're willing or you're ready to throw God to the fire because he hasn't met your needs. As you prepare again for the Easter Easter celebration and, and that time in your life, think of the verse in Luke 23, 46. This is a moment where Jesus kind of gets to, to a spot where he just says, okay, God, I have placed my life in your hands. Your will be done. Consider how that might work for you as you approach Easter, as you really trust God and just open your hands and say, I place my life in your hands. Thanks for tuning in. If you want to follow us each week, click here to subscribe. And if you want to take it a little bit further, click here for discussion materials.